This is Todd Hannigan, director of the Jubilees Palimpsest Project. This screen recording illustrates the major tools in Mirador for study of Latin Moses, a 5th century copy of a collection of texts known by scholars today as Jubilees and the Testament of Moses. Start from the home page of the Jubilees Palimpsest Project and click on Mirador. The first screen shows the objects available. Latin Moses, shelf mark C73 inferior at the Bibliotheca Ambrosiana in Milan, has all the features we will demonstrate. From here we can jump to any of the first few pages or click on the title for a gallery view of thumbnails for all pages. If we're looking for a particular page, we'll want the index tab on the left sidebar, which appears by default. This index shows the range of chapter and verse attested on that page, along with two page numbers. The first page number is the reconstructed page number of the f original 5th century codex. The second page number is the number given in modern times to the, to the manuscript after it was palimpsested in the 8th century. If we want to study the earliest part of Jubilees preserved in Latin, we click on Jubilees 13, 10 to 15. We can also move between pages using the arrows on the right and left of the screen, or the tray of thumbnails at the bottom. We can hide or restore this tray by clicking the three dots above the center of the tray. The zoom and pan features are intuitive. We can zoom in and out with click and shift click, or the wheel of a mouse, or the buttons in the lower right. Panning can be done with a mouse or a finger drag, or the buttons on the lower right. In order to see the enhanced spectral processing and raking images, we will need the Layers tab on the left pane. We can turn on layers for raking light coming from the northeast, southeast, etc. We can turn on transmissive to see the holes and scribal punctures, as if holding the folio up to a light. We can also turn on color enhancements of multispectral data, such as extended spectrum and Keith Knox's ruby image. This image shows the erased text in the darkest color and the overtext in royal blue and the overtext from the other side in light blue. An image of Cheriani's 1861 edition of this page is also available as a layer. The Annotations tab shows us more resources available. First, the WebRTI images are the interactive versions of raking illumina illumination for each color process. Clicking on one of these will open a new tab. Again, we can pan and zoom, but the main feature is the light bulb icon. Clicking this turns the mouse or a touchscreen into the control of a virtual flashlight. If we click or drag to the upper right, the light comes from the upper right, and so forth. Back to the Annotations tab, we also have a few transcriptions and translations available. Cheriani's 1861 edition has been converted to a TEI XML with some reader aids, such as verse numbers. This is available in a simple view, or XML and HTML for Epidoc purists. Vanderkam's 1989 translation of the Latin and Ethiopic are available for reference. The translation labeled latest will diverge from the 1989 translation as new readings develop through the Jubilees Palimpsest project. Community added overlay transcriptions also appear in the annotations tab, but unfortunately may appear by tag rather than the main annotation. The best way to see these annotations is to click the dialog icon for toggle annotations. Now we see blue rectangles for all the annotations overlaid on the image canvas. Hovering the mouse over these rectangles shows the annotation. Most often a transcription with tags for who contributed the annotation and the de degree of certainty asserted. Much work remains to be done to study and annotate the images. Anyone can do so by clicking the rectangle in the annotations toolbar and dragging a rectangle around any region. The final toolbar addressed in this video is the image manipulation toolbar toggled with the sliders icon in the upper left. These manipulations are not the same as spectral image processing. The rotate icons might be useful if one wishes to read the overtext. The mirror image icon might be useful if one wishes to read text showing through from the other side. That concludes this introductory video. Stay tuned for additional videos showcasing resources for study outside of Mirador, including the reconstruction of the original codex, the paleography chart, and options to search the index of overlay annotations.